Hey guys, Problematic here in the first video of what should be a series of videos on creating a Unity project, a Unity space shooter. Um, I know there's a lot of these floating around the internet, and in fact, we're going to be using uh, assets from Kenny.nl. These are really great free assets um, that are used a lot, but this is not an art tutorial. This is more of a co coding tutorial, uh, so let's take it in. So I've launched Unity. I'm using Unity 5.3.4, and I'm going to create a new 2D project named Space Shooter. I'm going to launch in. Um, the first thing I like to do when I start a new project is to do a little housekeeping. So I like to create a few different directories, sprites, scenes, and scripts. And then I'll just go ahead and save our default scene. I'm just going to call it main and put that in our scenes directory. Um, so I'm going to take this from the ground up, um, excluding art, obviously. So I've downloaded Kenny's assets, and I'm going to pull in the sprite sheet and the XML. And I'm just going to put those in the sprites directory, or try to put them in the sprites directory. Um, because if you open this sheet, that's a lot to do by hand. You can do this in the Unity Sprite Editor. You can uh, demarcate each of these, but he's already done the work. So we're going to go ahead and set this to multiple in the Sprite Import Settings. And I'm actually just going to rename these to like Game Sprites or something a little more, uh, a little more descriptive than Sheets or yeah, Sheet. And then I'm going to open the Asset Store, and there's a great free asset called. Um, it's called something like uh, Texture Atlas Slicer. I think it's XML Texture. Yeah. So this is free. We're going to download that, import it, and then to create a new directory called Third Party Assets for code that's not mine. So go ahead and drag that in there. And then we can just right click on this. And remember, we set this to sprite mode multiple. We can right click and down here, select slice sprite using XML. Um, this window will let us select an XML source and a pivot, and then we slice it. And then it'll do a little bit of importing. And now we have this automatically sliced up for us. So let's take one of these. And I happen to like uh, the Sprite I like is called Player Ship. And I like the red one, so let's try Player Ship 3 red. That looks pretty good. So instead of dragging it directly into the scene, into the hierarchy, I'm going to actually create an empty object. I'm going to call it Player, and I'm going to drag my sprite onto it. And the reason I do this is that now my sprite can be manipulated independently of the container object. So if I, for example, wanted to have my sprite rotated, uh, let's rotate it on a different axis, the z-axis. If I wanted to have it rotated from the off the default offset, I could do that. If I wanted to, you know, scale it up or scale it down, I could do that without affecting the parent object at all. So I just created an empty game object, added the sprite to it, and I called it, I renamed it to sprite. Um, and then I can control it separately. So if you get sprites, for example, that are turned the wrong way, they're not facing up, uh, this is a great way to do that without needing to rotate the object itself and then account for that you know, for the rest of, of your development time. So now that we have this basic player object, let's go, and go ahead and create our first script, and we'll call it player. And the first thing we're going to do is get our little player uh, moving around the screen and turning toward our cursor. So... Let's launch this. I use MonoDevelop, which will take a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and make it full screen here. Or I'll wait for it to, uh, to balloon out. There we go. So the first thing that I want to do is just wrap it in the namespace. Um, there's no default namespace in the Unity project and I don't really like that. So I'm going to wrap it in the space shooter namespace. I'm going to clear out the guts. So um, 
I'm going to try and stay as simple as possible and not expand until we need it. So the very first thing we need uh, is a float to represent our speed. And we can default it to whatever we want, but I happen to like 10 units per second. Um, so when we use the arrow keys, our, our little ship icon here will move around the screen at 10 units per second. Um, we want to add, we're going to do this physics based or you know, cheating a little, but we're going to add a rigid body and then we're going to add a box collider. We could add like a polygon collider or something. But this is a good enough approximation for now. So I'm going to leave it non-kinematic and I'm going to make sure that it's not a trigger. So just the default settings. And then I'm going to add the player. Um, and then the player, I need a reference to our rigid body. So I will have rigid body 2D body. And let's uh, cache that on a wake. So we can say body equals get component rigid body 2D. Um, and then in fixed update, so there is update and fixed update and then late update. Uh, when you're dealing with physics and rigid bodies, you always want to make sure that you're operating inside fixed update uh, because that's when the physics are, are um, ticking. Uh, that's when the physics are being updated by the engine. So the first thing that we want to do is get our input axes. And let's go and take, the, take a look at that in Unity. So here under project settings, we have input and we have these, this axes dropped axes we have you know the default ones horizontal and vertical are the ones we're interested in now which are a and d uh, for horizontal and s and w for vertical so we want to get uh, an input vector that represents the keys that we're pushing so we're going to go vector 2 input vector equals new vector 2 input dot get axis raw horizontal and then input dot get axis raw Vertical. Um, we could use input dot get access. I like to, I prefer to use get access raw because it's a little more responsive. With get access, uh, you your value is between zero and one, but it kind of slides towards zero if you're releasing the key, or slides toward one if you're pressing the key. Where input get access raw is either one if the key is held down, or zero if the key is released. Um, if we were going to support a joystick, and maybe later on down the road we will, we might use get access for that. But where it's keyboard and I want responsive input, I'm going to use get access raw. Uh, then the last thing we do is dot normalized. And normalizing a vector means that we're making it a unit length. We're making it so that it has a magnitude of one. Um, this wouldn't matter if we were only moving horizontally or only moving vertically. Because we can move on a diagonal, um, not normalizing the vector means that we would move on a diagonal more quickly than we would move on one of the straight axes. So the first thing that we can assign that, we can say body.velocity equals input vector times speed. And you might say, uh, wait a minute, don't you need to, to multiply that by time dot delta time so that you're not doing crazy, you know, frame rate dependent speeds? Um, the answer is no. Because we're setting body velocity, the physics engine is going to handle the movement for us. We're using transform.position or something like body.move position, then yes, we would multiply by delta time, but because we're we're setting a velocity directly, we, we don't need to worry about that. So if we hop back to the editor, we have our player attached, our speed of 10, and we should see, you're not going to see much in, in our game screen, um, but here, well, the first thing that you see is that we are falling slowly, very slowly downward. So let's fix that. Let's go to edit, project settings, physics 2D, and you can see that the default gravity is negative 9.81 uh, meters per second or units per second down. So we can just set that to zero because it's top down. We don't have any default gravity. So if we launch again, you can see we're not sliding and we're moving around. And you can see that we don't move on, on the diagonal any faster than we move on the horizontal or the vertical uh, because we're normalizing that vector. So the next thing we want to do, because it's not very interesting to just slide around and always face world up. So the next thing we want to do is turn toward the mouse. So let's get the mouse position in world space. Um, that's a vector three mouse position equals camera dot main dot screen to world point. And we're going to give it input dot mouse position. 
So what this does is the, the mouse position is given to, in screen pixels, right? So it's based on our position on the screen and not in the world. And we need to translate that. Um, and the only way to reliably do that is to use the camera or a camera and say, based on this screen position for the camera, where is that in world space? What this does, this trans translates our screen position of the mouse into a world point and then we can get the director direction. And we actually want a vector two for that. Um, mouse direction equals mouse position minus our position. So transform dot position and then again, normalized. Uh, we might get away with not normalizing it, but using uh, unit vectors makes a lot of the math easier. Then the next thing we need to do is get the angle between our up, so vector two dot up, so the angle will increase as we go like this toward you know 180 and then 180. Um, so to get that, we'll say float look angle equals vector two dot angle, vector two dot up, and mouse direction. Now we could use transform dot up, um, which means if our ship was you know pointing out in this direction, that would be considered up, and we could get the the angle between our facing and the mouse, but um, since we're going to be signing it, we're going to be signing the, the angle directly instead of saying turn toward this angle. Um, it's, it's useful to be able to get that from, from world up or from vector two dot up. If we have that look angle, we can say body dot move rotation. It says rotate the rigid body to angle. So we're not giving it a delta angle. We're giving it an absolute angle, look angle. And if we go back and try that out, we can see that on this side it works, it's pointing to us, but we come up to a problem when we come, when we cross the, the hemisphere of the circle that it's now pointing in an odd, it's pointing in pretty much a mirror of the direction. Uh, we can solve this using a cross product. And a cross product basically says, given two angles, so given our up and the, the angle between up and our mouse, uh, find the angle that is perpendicular to them. Uh, so let's try that out. We can say vector three. Um, there's no such thing as a, a 2D cross product, um, but we can, we'll just use some of the information and, and get what we need anyway. So vector three cross product equals vector three dot cross, and then again, vector two dot up, and mouse direction. Um, and then, what, so that, that gives us our cross product vector. Now, let's visualize that. So that's giving us between up and the angle of our mouse, it's giving us the perpendicular angle, um, which is gonna be pointing either straight away from us or straight toward us uh, or the camera. So we can visualize that by in here saying debug.drawRay, and we'll start at our position and then we'll draw a array along the cross product. And we're just gonna multiply this by 10 just to make sure that, you know, some number, some arbitrary large number just to make sure that it's visible. Uh, to see the effect of this, we're gonna have to turn off our 2D camera. Um, we'll get the side view. So you can see over here, the cross product, that white line here is pointing straight away from the camera. And if we're on the right half, it's pointing toward the camera. So we can use, and that's the, the, the Z or the Z axis that is, um, that is pointing along. So we can use that information to say, if cross product dot Z is less than zero, so if we're on the right half of the triangle, if it's pointing toward us, look angle equals 360 degrees minus look angle. And that is going to solve the problem for us of only turning correctly in the, the left half of the circle. You can see now that we can go completely around. We'll go ahead and turn that back to 2D. Um, another thing that I like to do, the camera starts out at a negative 10 on the Z axis. I, uh, I think this little icon gets in the way. I like to set it to something like negative 50, just so that uh, I'd have to zoom way out for that to appear. Um, it doesn't matter. We're in an orthographic projection by default because it's a 2D, uh, 2D project. Um, so it doesn't matter how near or far the camera is. It, we're going to see the same 
uh, same thing unless we get near nearer than the near clip plane or far, further than the far clip plane. Um, so now we have movement and looking. And I think that's a pretty good start. Uh, going in next, uh, there's a thing that I want to do. I want to refactor it. I don't like this style where we, uh, we're always pointing toward the cursor. I would rather be pointing toward a crosshair and then move that with the mouse and always aim toward a crosshair so that as we move, we're always aiming, you know, in kind of the same direction. And we'll do that in the next video. Uh, thanks, guys.